Welcome to the Minecraft Dev Sync. It is still November, 30th of November. Uh, and uh, Mike Hansen has joined us again. Hooray! He's back. He <laughs> I'm still here for a second day. <laughs> um, we uh, just started chatting about um, the Mark II build process and um, I hadn't hit record yet, so... That's the context of where we're at. Um, Chris, were you about to start talking about what you'd been doing? Um, yeah, I might as well just finish that up. So a couple of things I've done today. One is I created a, there's a, a feature slash mark to um, boot. Um, I guess what I called it. Yeah, mark to boot <clears throat> um, branch now that has the changes I've been making that are directly related to the boot sequence document that we will share soon, our fine community members. Um, but I wanted to give my work in progress to uh, Mike so that he would uh, he would see where I, how far I've gotten um, with with that and not you know duplicate any work or anything. <laughs> uh, so if you have a chance to look at the um, document, I, there have been some pretty major updates to it. Um, I added a section about getting the, the device's um, connectivity status versus internet connectivity status. Because I don't think, I think regardless of whether or not we can connect to the internet, if we aren't connected to a network, that's when the Wi-Fi setup should be launched. Um, because that's all Wi-Fi setup does is it connects you to a WAN or LAN network uh, or a WAN network. And um, so, and after that, once you connect it to your network, then you can say, okay, is, does that network have an internet connection? So that's probably the biggest change I made in that document today. Um, and something I talked with Mike about a little bit on that at most. And, and that is, you know, I was basically I was fleshing out what, I, what we talked about yesterday, which was, you know, how are we getting from, um, you know, all the skills initialized to, to the point where we can launch Wi-Fi or pairing or something. So that's kind of what I put in there. Um, please take a look. No, I, I didn't see in the document, or the, I saw the no internet event that was in there, but I didn't, maybe I missed it. Are there events related to the Wi-Fi being connected or not? Um, yeah, those would be inside the Wi-Fi skill. Okay. Um, and... I should probably at least mention the one that we're looking forward to, to know that network is up. And I, I mean, I don't know if there's any trigger to if, if it goes down at some point, if we, I mean, at some point, it should probably be on the bus somewhere so we could change the GUI or something, right, if in, at a later stage. Yeah, we, well, we're, not, we're not really concentrating on... Um, you know, what happens if it goes down after boot right now? We're just concentrating on boot. So, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, please look through that, provide, you know, put comments in the in the document or whatever. You should all have access to it. And let me know. And if it, if we like it, then I'll, we'll move forward with that. I'm trying to get a document into a state where we can share it with the community, much like we did the activities one. So that's kind of what I've been working on. And what I will continue to work on. And I did um, take a look at, Ken, I looked at your script a little bit, trying to understand um, the network manager and how all that works. I, I have never touched that. So I've just been looking at the uh, genome um, website, trying to figure out all these different states and what they mean and all this other stuff. But um, so, but what it looks like to me, and Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're going to be able to the, the, the code you wrote will tell me um, if um, if we're connected to the network. It's not really checking for an internet connection. It's like not going out, you know, and looking for um, you know, you know Google.com or whatever, right? It's just it's just looking to see if it's got a network connection. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it was specifically designed to deal with the AW Connect bring up sequence, so. It's detecting right now, and I haven't had a chance to run it on a fresh build yet. I don't know if anybody else has. Uh, but once I get a chance to look at the Wi-Fi status log, I'll be able to tell. 
what I think I can, tech, can detect right now is that the access point is in a active or configuring state. So I believe that's what config means. So if you look, it, it's putting out a uh, state for each of the devices. If you look at the WLAN zero state, it, there's three things I saw. I saw active, uh, disconnected, and config. So I'm pretty sure config is the access point going through its bring up sequence. Disconnected is obviously the SSIDs out, and that network connection is no longer active. And active is, as you might think, we have an active connection to the Wi-Fi network connected to WLAN zero. Now, that does not mean we're connected to the internet. That is established by the Wi-Fi skill, who goes through that thing I told you yesterday where he pings the Google DNS server and he tries yeah. to download a page from Microsoft. and. Yeah. If he's successful, he says, I've got an internet connection. And if he fails, um, he just basically keeps trying that. Uh, now, there's also the concept of the clock being set. But I suspect that that's less of an issue and we can ignore it for now. And like all good problems, it will go away. So the Wi-Fi skill will fail if the clock's not set, if we get internet connectivity and he gets kicked off before NTP gets set. But that should be okay, because if the Wi-Fi skill fails, he'll time out and retry again. And at some point in time, the assumption is the clock will be set and the SSL certs will be accepted. So yeah, uh, but that's, that's what that script does. It looks for uh, those three states, basically. And um, then I wasn't sure what to do. So the only thing I actually did is if it's disconnected more than like five or six minutes, it reboots. I'm assuming that's still in there, uh, but that's it. Okay, so, so yeah, I'm off. so it sounds like I can use what you've done so far for oh, network connectivity status that I documented, I put in the document and that's good. Yeah, I mean, no. Um, well, you can, you can use it for network connectivity status. You can't use it for internet connectivity. Exactly. That, that's what I'm saying is I wanted that separate status. Yeah. And I didn't You've know if given you wanted me that, 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 that logic. So I didn't so. know if you wanted that script to uh, send a message out the message bus or just use the file system to update an indicator. I, I didn't really care. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't gotten that far. I was just trying to, you know, figure out what I was doing and if it did what I wanted it. It was doing what, you know, at least from, from a base standpoint, I was doing what I needed it to do and it is. So. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, you can say it doesn't matter. You can fire up the Wi-Fi skill before you even get a network. It'll just keep failing. But on the other hand, if you look at the boot sequence that we talked about in Hawaii, you probably shouldn't be firing up any skills until you get a, uh, a network connection. I, I don't understand why the Wi-Fi skill would ever fail, like based on well, if the clock's not set. If the Wi-Fi skill runs and the clock hasn't been set, then it'll fail on fetching the HTTPS site because the certificate, the SSL cert won't be valid. The dates won't, won't jive. Oh, you mean like, but by fail, you mean it'll throw an error because it's, it checks the connection. Well, I, and... No, I mean, when I say fail, I mean the Wi-Fi skill will not report that it's, uh, it's successfully connected to the internet. Okay. Until the network's connected, uh, until the time is conditions. updated. Yeah. One is until the system clock is updated. Two is until such time as it has a network connection, right? Yep. You can't connect to the network. You can't get to the internet. So there's several conditions under which it will fail. Yes. I think I just wanted to clarify the, the meaning of the term fail in that scenario because, like, yeah. by definition, the clock won't be set when the, like, is never set when the Wi-Fi skill runs and the Wi-Fi skill currently completes its process of, of, well, that's because of order of bring up, and that's kind of what we talked about in Hawaii. If we didn't fire up the Wi-Fi skill, which I'm not saying it's harming anything by doing so, I'm but the clock the clock will it, never be set before the Wi-Fi skill, before the Wi-Fi gets. You I know. don't know. I'm just saying it's totally totally change when it gets. <laughs> for changing. Well, no, 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 but so you need a network connection. Skill like didn't get fired up until yeah. you had a network connection. Then by the time the Wi-Fi skill got control the network clock would probably also be set. So, you know, that's a possibility, but I'm not yeah, saying- And then you bring up sequence, the Wi-Fi skill is not launched until- Yeah, I'm saying if you don't launch it until you have a network, 
then you won't see any errors out of it, period, right? And that's the plan. Well, but hang on. If you don't launch the Wi-Fi skill until you have a network, then what's the point in launching the Wi-Fi skill? Well, okay, we don't want to launch the Wi-Fi skill until we know that we don't have a network. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't say that. Right. No, 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 no. Because I can connect to a network and not be able to reach the internet. They are two distinctly different states of being. Correct. That's why. I'm not 100% clear yet, but that's okay. Let's just move on. Um, Chris, were you... Well, well, oh, make, I was... let, me make you, let me make you clear. So if you have a local subnet in your house and it is not connected to your internet router, I can have the Mark II connect to that network and not be able to reach the internet. Correct, yes. That's called edge connectivity, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I fully get all that. Um... Oh, okay. Yeah, let, let's just leave it for now. Um, uh, I was thinking to, um, I was going to say it's, it would be good to, uh, to document um, any of these uh, cases that we're not handling right now. So yeah, I think you were talking about, you know, like um, if, say, you were connected to a network, say you were plugged into an Ethernet cable, but you still didn't have an internet connection, you know, then what do we do? If you're connected to a Wi-Fi network and we don't have an internet connection, then what do we do? And obviously there's, you know, the device does something at the moment, um, uh, but they're not cases that we're trying to address with this current piece of work, right? No, I, th I don't know if that's true. Uh, Michael said that he wants to handle the Mark II case. So the Mark II case would, would go something like this. If I am connected to the edge, but I'm not connected to the internet, then the Wi-Fi skill will fail. And I'll be aware of that in the Mark II, and that is the proper behavior, correct? Because at the end of the day, the Mark II requires internet connectivity, which is a superset of network connectivity. Yes, I think, but I, I feel like there's going to be some, some deeper UX work to look at. Um, in the oh, future they're, they're around yeah, like know. you know how do we guide you know imagine you, your device has already been running for for three weeks and then for some reason your network is alive like your 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 LAN is alive um, and you're on wi-fi but it's not connected to the internet you know um what do we do in that circumstance do we like just tell people do we like you know um see if they want to connect to another wi-fi network do we yeah, yeah blah, blah, Michael blah. said not to worry about that, so I'm not worried yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, but it'd be good for us to just, just note when we find these sorts of pathways that we're not chasing down right now, I think. Well, preferably we would seek out the message, contact your internet provider, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. But yeah, there's multiple things. I've thought about it a little bit, but yeah, if we're not talking about it right now, let's not have to worry about well, it too much. That was but, tongue in cheek, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Yeah, I mean, well, well, yeah. There's distinction. Is your internet, uh, you know, are you says wanting to like have you moved your micro to another location mm -hmm. and the Wi-Fi is just different? In theory, in that case, your phone's not going to be connected to the Wi-Fi to the internet either. So. <laughs> Yeah. So, or or is the internet just down for a while? And and um, yeah. there's yeah, there's multiple different ways we could handle it. And but if that's not the scope right now, we yeah. Well, the code that's in there now, just so you know, if that condition exists for more than five minutes, it'll reboot the system. Yeah, I don't know that that's a long-term solution. What that code that I gave you, that you put in, <laughs> to the build is doing. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um. But then, yeah, we. We also then end up with the uh, Mycroft screaming in the middle of the night. I've I've created a Wi-Fi network called Mycroft. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what we want to avoid. Yeah, yes, and that may not be the desired behavior. I'm just saying it's your behavior right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Mark II behavior right now. Yeah, Chris, yeah. are you uh, anything else from you? No. Cool, Derek. Come on, Derek. Uh, yeah, I did uh, do a little work on uh, the screens that uh, would go, not the out of scope stuff we just talked about, but that would go in, um, that would show the progress um, between, well, ideally, and I don't know, answer me if we can do this. Let's say 
you've uh, you've got this screen that says choose a Wi-Fi network to connect to your Mycroft device, and um, at that stage, you know you're doing this on your phone, and then you've you've actually fired off your your Wi-Fi creds to the Mark II. Um, at that stage, it would be nice to switch from that choose the Wi-Fi network to connect to your Mycroft device to this um, progress page. So if we can kick that off, all, I've, it's real simple. It just says attempting to connect to Wi-Fi and has a, the busy indicator, the Q, QT busy indicator in the middle. Um, that's what I would suggest for that page. And then if success, we do the connected uh if not success then um that's when we prompt the the user that it's going to restart the wi-fi setup so i've kind of got the green success check mark that we've currently got and then kind of a new page for the failure you know red with an x saying connection has failed and and the wi-fi setup is going to restart yeah you're, you'll probably need to get with panacore to affect that change right on the GUI? Um, no, I think we can do that, can't we? No, no we don't We don't handle the um, connectivity status monitoring. Oh. We Wait. don't handle the connect connection. Is it, That's done in isn't this connect. what the debus messages are all about? So the debus messages are, yeah, designed to understand what's going on in AW Connect. Are you meaning trigger trigger it to go back I mean, it'll go back to the uh, mycroft access point right if it fails to connect automatically hmm. so what i'm what i'm saying is right now in the aw connect container there are Sorry, screens that are right. being displayed by panacore correct yes sorry say that again there are there screens and audio Dialogues that Panticore in the AW Connect container are rendering? No, no, no. That's all in the Wi Fi Connect skill. So the Wi Fi Connect skill is the one that tells you to go to the access point and enter your credentials? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought that was in the Panticore AW Connect stuff. Nope. So in that case, the code that I gave you should be integrated in the Wi-Fi skill so that if it is indeed the case that we get a config message when the access point is configuring, we could trigger that screen. Yeah, it might actually make sense for it to live in the Wi-Fi Connect skill, you know, and have mm -hmm. it very specifically be a Pentacore AW Connect version of Wi-Fi connection. Yes, I suspect, I suspect that's correct. Well, I can talk a little bit about that. Cool. Uh, so I um, went searching with for the DBus messages as well and, and figured out eventually <laughs> that you had to connect to this special uh, DBus socket that AWB Connect has. Now, I found a, I found a different property. So, so Ken, your script, you dig in, down into the actual devices. Um, there's another property that deals with just at a high level, check connectivity, so you can query it for a numeric state. I don't know if this this is like across all the hardware devices or what, uh, but anyway, it reports back a value from zero to to four, and four means it's got full connectivity. Um, so I'm not sure how this is different than the the, the config message you mentioned. Um, so what I've what I did is I got this into there goes my Mycroft. Uh, what I got this is uh, as into the enclosure or the Mark II enclosure skill, um, or just the Mark II skill. Well, wait a minute. So there's the Mark II skill, and then there's the hardware or the enclosure. Yeah. Class. So I put I put this in the Mark II skill, but it's as a test, and it should probably go in the enclosure, some somewhere in the HAL that's related to Mark II specifically, since this requires the AW Connect system D. Or deep us, uh, well, well, yeah, that's been, a, that's been a bone of contention, whether this should live in a Mark II skill or whether it should live in the enclosure. Um, I don't care either way. Uh, putting it in the enclosure would have the additional benefit that if we did decide to not load skills until some trigger point, then at least it would have a chance to run. Whereas if you put it in the skill and you make that decision, it'll never run. 
Yeah. But the argument for putting it in the Wi-Fi skill is that, and I wasn't aware of this, uh, if it is indeed the Wi-Fi skill that's rendering all of the screens and dialogues for the access point, like, you know, go to your phone and do this. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, now I, and now put up the connected or whatever screen. Then if you're looking to detect failure or if you're looking to detect a reset condition, it would seem to be best placed in that Wi-Fi skill. Well, so the problem, I, I wouldn't put it in the Wi-Fi skill at this point since it, it's very Mark II specific, right? It, it requires connecting to that special uh, D-Bus socket that it's, it can't connect to the system D-Bus. Um, so yeah, it, it should... Yeah, that's said to have a special Mark II Wi-Fi skill. Oh, I see. Well, in either case, um, so I have I have it set up where there's a thread now that's that's just polling, checking that connectivity value, and basically reports a state change as a as a bus event. So that's that's something I can uh, when I I can push somewhere or Did or you put that in the enclosure or oh, you put that in the Mark II skill. I put it in the Mark II skill. That's the kind of thing that I put in the enclosure, right? And then anything that reacts to it could be in the skill. Oh, well, I'm not sure wherever it should go. Um, I can can get it in there now. I you use the Dbus Python library. I had some difficulty with that, so we could maybe we can talk about that uh, tomorrow. I just use the Qdbus uh, command line to just. Um, I, suspect, that's, it's, I suspect you had the same issues Gez did with the Dbus uh, Python module. You may want to discuss that with him. It needs PyG object and all that fun stuff. So I, I just I just did a sub process out to Qdbus, which is already there and didn't, didn't require anything special. Um, yeah, well, I think I, mean, I think that's another I benefit of checking it in yeah, the enclosure, because um, you know, I can see skills. You know, skills uh, eventually, you know, shouldn't be able to just run pseudo shell commands on mm -hmm. random people's devices. Um, but something in the enclosure, you would expect to be able to like interact with the hardware, um, and so that makes a lot of sense. And then if it's in emitting the, the messages out and the, the Wi-Fi skill responds to those, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, so yeah. That would be my first that inclination. Great. It goes in, uh, that would probably go into uh, client, uh, client base uh, for the enclosure. Okay. Yeah, so there is a, because be careful, there's two enclosures. There's a client enclosure and there's a hardware enclosure. This yeah. kind of thing would probably be in the client enclosure. It could go in the hardware enclosure since it's Panacore specific. I mean, I think they're, uh, they're going to, that's going to change anyway. Yeah. Like we, we need to consolidate. <laughs> around yeah. One. yeah, but just, just to be consistent. So take a look at both the client enclosure code and the hardware enclosure code, uh, because the hardware enclosure code actually has a mark 2.py under it, uh, okay. and figure out where you think it's best placed. But I think, the uh, the consensus is that in some somewhere in there, uh, be the guy that reads the uh, bus and sends out notifications on the message bus, and then the responders to those messages could be anywhere, and they'd probably be a skill. Yeah, so this would be Derek, I guess, responding. Then we can we need to decide on a, a connected disconnected event uh -huh. for this, and then Derek could respond, basically in his GUI wait. You know, in the status GUI, wait for the connected event, and if you time out, then then go to the failure state, right? Yeah, yeah. Love it. Sounds good. Um, Speaking of Derek, you want to give your update real quick? Yeah, do we finish? Before you run away? You, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Other than working on those those GUI things with the Wi-Fi stuff, I just continued my, my CAD march um, to <laughs> uh, the next prototype, and we did an update on on where things were at with um, the PCBEA, the SJ201, and just kind of projected out how long it was going to take to get the first couple of prototypes. So, um, yeah, all good uh, there. Uh, looks like we're going to get the, the, the PCBAs by the end of the week. They'll be shipped, but they're coming from China, so they're not going to be in uh, Kevin's hands until probably a week from today at the fastest. And then he's got a program and turn them around and send to me. So um, probably the eighth or ninth, I'll get those in hand. And then hopefully I can get them put into a prototype by the end of next week. Um, yeah, so all goes well by mid month. We should, mid December, we should have two prototypes of the, the next gen.
Um, and then we talk about trying to get, uh, we're actually getting 10 boards on this, this spin. So um, the next eight we might not be able to get done before uh, Christmas just because of you know, logistics and stuff. But shooting to get two before Christmas for sure. Which is really all we kind of need. Uh, the the, the follow-on eight um, don't have a specific purpose right now. Um, you know, if like a, an investor or a potential uh, prospective client is interested, that's kind of what they're earmarked for. Um, so for you guys, I, you know, as much as I'd love to get you all one of the those prototypes, they're not really going to be functionally all that much different than, than the ones with the ports coming out the sides. So. Uh, eventually, though, you, you will get one. <laughs> Um, Mike, you have devices already, right? I can see a, something flashing have... in the background. Oh yeah, that's my, uh, that's the one I assembled. I'm, I was trying to mess around with it and it's, it's stuck in a boot loop <laughs> right oh, now. Yeah, you've got, you've got a 3D printed one though, right? That one worked okay? Yeah, yeah, that one, that one, they, they both work fine. Okay, cool. good. I'm just yeah. messing around with it. We'll get you a third one when we can too. Is that right, Derek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should. We have another. We've got a stock of extra the the laser cut ones. Um, so yeah, we can get you a third one of those. Okay, cool. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool, Mike. You were already talking. So anything else from from your end? Um, let's see. So I, yeah, I done the attempted this this uh, skill for the Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, I was kind of looking at, I think uh, Derek had mentioned yesterday. Uh, I know that the there's like there's a failure state where you lose the internet, and or you don't have the internet, and you you can't really do much more with the Mark II for setup, right? Uh, at least not via voice. Um, so I'd I'd wondered. Uh, I have some stuff that I could do where you could do speech to text locally with a finite set of commands. Um, and I was going to see, uh, make sure it should, it should run just fine on the, on the Pi 4 board here. Um, so I was, I was looking into getting something small and self-contained for that and seeing if, if, uh, if it would run okay. And maybe people would be interested in, uh, in having that as like a, a fallback, you know, uh, just in case. Um, and then, oh, I'll, uh, and then lastly, there's I'm also working on the local text to speech stuff to see if I can get that going too, with some decent performance. Cool, cool. Um, and Ken Smith. Yeah, I continue to work on uh, unraveling the mess that is Mimic One, and uh, getting that to work in a sane manner. I, it will interleave, which is, I guess, desirable in this case. But, um, yeah, anyway, so that's what I'm working on, and hopefully I'll have that buttoned up by tomorrow. Uh, just so you know, Michael, what I'm talking about is that right now, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, on speech to text, we do this too. If we fail, we fall back to local by default. I believe on speech to text, we use uh, Mimic 1. Oh, no, for speech-to-text, we use um, Pocket Sphinx, right? Is there? Pocket just Sphinx just for the wake word, um, if the if precise fails, we fall back to Pocket Sphinx for the wake word, but we don't do it for... We don't, we don't fall back to local speech-to-text if we fail, right? No. So that would be great. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah I don't know which something better than using. Pocket Sphinx. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what yeah. I'm using, but... Deep speech, uh, the latest huge scorer, works really good. It's just slow as hell. Uh, yeah, I'd, I've been working on um, getting Koki to run on this. It, the yeah, the this you got to do it in the streaming mode to have any kind of performance. Um, yeah, I've got them both running on the Mark II or on my machine. Both the mm -hmm. uh, previous one, which is not point nine or whatever, mm -hmm. that works okay. It's relatively fast. It's about three seconds. Uh, you know, recognition is pretty poor. Uh, and then the, the huge scorer model that they just came out with, the recognition is great, but on the Mark II, it takes about 10 or 12 seconds, whether yeah. you stream it or not. 
um, for speech to text recognition. What I'm working on specifically right now is text to speech, mm -hmm. where we go to our preferred model, which is up in the cloud on our Mimic 2 server. And that works by, if it fails, falls back and renders it using a local version of Mimic 1. Right. That's already built in. Um, and I'm trying to get that to work sanely because it, there's other issues from a session orientation perspective that, that are architecturally foundationally problematic. But just to be able to fall back and play the local and interleave, right? So I said, here, go render this sentence, right? And it's going to, or maybe these sentences, and it's going to break up into many little files. And each one, I'm going to go and say, hey, Mimic2, give me this, you know, uh, give me this WAV file back. When that fails, I'll say locally, hey, Mimic1, give me that WAV file back. Now, right now, what it does, does is an A play, which it shouldn't. It should be going to the TTS service and adding it to the queue. Yeah. In the worst case, they'll be interleaved. You may get a Mimic2 voice and then a couple of Mimic1s until Mimic2 comes back. But that seems like the same way it should work, and that's specifically what I'm working on right now. So is is the plan then for the TTS service to to take wave data you can push at it in the future, or or how are you working this? TTS. Or the, sorry, the the sound out. service. Oh, the STT. You're saying? Oh, no. So for so you you said the problem right now is it, it runs an A play. Does does it does the TTS service actually run that A play? So that's the problem. We have a TTS service that the TTS plugins like Mimic 2 honor. Historically speaking, Mimic 1 was the fallback and it didn't honor going through the uh, TTS services queues. So it just does an A play. And so you'll get all kinds of funky behavior. So I'm working on fixing that and interspersing them. But really, uh, it's, it, the problem is from a session level. Um, I don't want to get into that. That's just an architectural issue. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <clears throat> um, yeah. So maybe when I. When I get my text to speech running locally, we can talk to and I can make hopefully make that work properly uh, within the the interleaving. <clears throat> what I've what I've heard is Larynx uh, sound. Is that your project, Larynx? Yeah, Larynx is my project. That sounds better than Mimic One, so I'd rather fall back to that. Yeah, it should run uh, just fine on on the Pi Four. Now, for large large sentences, we can. We could break it up, and it can actually. That's already happening by the TTS uh, layer. Okay, great. So it breaks it up into sentences, and then. Yeah. All right. yeah well, uh, it, 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 it at a minimum it breaks it up on sentences. It should be breaking it up on uh, length as well. And if it's not, that can be fixed as well. Could but, I um, um? Could I make a small suggestion? Ken yeah. and Mike, you guys should totally hook up for a <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> sorry about so, that. So Michael, just to button up, all I'm doing is getting. Uh, Mimic 1 and Mimic 2 or any plugin to work properly, we can then come back and rally around and revisit improving Mimic 1. Okay, great. Sorry about that, guys. No, uh, that's all good. Um, and there is a, there's an OBOS Larynx plugin already, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it sounds like uh, there is potentially the idea of a, you know, um, I don't know if it, potentially just in a, as a contrig value of like this TCS is local, therefore can act as a backup, you know, um, whereas at the moment, the only thing that does that is Mimic 1, I believe. Um, but yeah, that would be an interesting feature. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to uh, train a different model for, for this specifically that has um, about 100 voices available in it and should, should run faster than Larynx does right now. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it'll be a good fallback. Awesome. Um, Ah, oh, that leaves me. Uh, I um, spent a lot of yesterday trying to debug what was going on with the latest Mark II build. Um, so as I mentioned, I think before the recording started, um, I found some interesting things with the way that the new XDG paths were getting um, defined and created and that there was some, um, some race conditions there. Um, so it looks like, uh, okay. And Jarvis have, have done some nice work and solved that for me over overnight. Um, uh, but I don't think that that will be the end of it. So I'm hoping it is. And maybe it was just, you know, that thing that was causing, you know, 
and uh, future, you know, all sorts of other weird things based on it, you know, not having access to the config, but um, there might be some other stuff there. So uh, I'll keep looking at that. Um, also getting back to some of the language stuff. So we've um, found some issues in the Azerbaijani um, uh, lingua franca PR. Um, so just some small stuff. Uh, and there's still the, the, the never ending time zone dramas over there. Uh, that yeah, need, need some attention. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, broadly I've been sticking to um, community PRs. I will jump back and um, and just double check that the Wolfram uh, skill is is working properly on the on the production server um, against the production server, uh, and then if someone can can review that and we can get that merged in, that would be awesome. But I think that's it. All right. We'll another slightly longer one, but we'll keep cutting them down. And uh, everyone knows what they're doing for the next 24 hours. Yes. Beautiful. Yep. All right. Go forth mm -hmm. and do great things. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. So, yeah. All right. Bye, guys.